Hello everybody, my name is Christian Quick, and welcome back to another video. Today, we are going to be talking about building a jar file. A jar file is the file that has your mod. Now, we've only gone down the a little bit of the basics of assets, and after this video, we are now going to be moving on to all of the blocks and things that blocks can do. And there's a ton of videos of uh, things that blocks can do, but this is going to be the breaking point. So this is the point where I get to show you how we can put our thing in a little jar, all our all of our mod, and then anyone who wants to play it after this, it's fine. Now, you can make a jar at any point, but what we do know is that we have my thing called Fabric Tutorial, and it is on my, uh, should be on my desktop, here it is, Fabric Tutorial. So you're going to need to know where your file is located how to make that jar file basically is I'm going to go into our terminal and then I'm going to hit dot slash grade loot and then I'm going to space and then type in build and hit enter now it's only working on the assets which is perfectly fine and also our two blocks that we have but it still sometimes can take a little moment and it said build successful So now, you have basically your jar file, but how do I play with it in the game? Well, whoever you are playing with, if you send it to a friend, or if you make a mod for a friend, or maybe you just want to play with it on your own, you're going to need the fabric uh, installer, and it's going to say installation for Minecraft launcher, and then you want to go to download for Windows, and then I think this is probably like my third or fourth one, but that's perfectly fine. Uh, but it's going to open up your installer and it's going to say, what loader version do you want? What Minecraft version do you want? If you're not sure, always check your Gradle pro dot properties and bring it up and let's compare notes here. So here we have our Minecraft version, which is 1.20.1. .1. And then over here we have, well, the same Minecraft version. And then under two lines, we have our loader version, 0.14.21. And then here it says 0.14.21. They match. Perfect. So what I want to do is hit install. When you hit install, please make sure that your Minecraft and anything Minecraft is closed because it needs to install things and your Minecraft can't be open for them to properly work. So we'll hit OK. And I think in that note there, it was telling us that we are going to basically need an API. Uh, API stands for advanced, uh, what, advanced Placement Interface. But we're going to need a Fab Fabric API. And then let's also look up the 1.20.1 because that is what we have. Now, there's a couple ways you could go through this. Uh, normally, I usually take everything from CurseForge. But you have your files, and then if I click on there, we have our 1.20.1 fabric API, and then you have this API number. How can I tell what API number I want? Well, let's go back into the mod, and it says at the very bottom where it says dependencies, it is depending on the fabric version, and then it's got 0 0.84.0, and then it's saying plus for 1.20.1, meaning this is the Minecraft version. So we need basically version 84 for Minecraft 1.20.1. So in here we have 0 0.84 um, for 1.20.1. Make sure that it is for fabric. Fabric. Uh, there are other things out there. But from here, we can now download our file. Here is our API. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on it and show in folder. It'll probably end up in your downloads folder if it doesn't pop up it didn't pop up which is perfectly fine I'll just click on my little directory here and then I'll go to downloads and there it is at the top now what you're going to need also need to do is those two need to be put in the same thing so uh, let me actually make a, uh, a new folder for a second because I do actually have some mods current uh, and then let's call this just hold <laughs> I'm going to put this at the top for a second because it's only for this video. So let's look up percent 
app data percent hit enter and then we are going to have our dot minecraft folder if you want to do this the long way uh, you can always go into uh, your file explorer and you can go into this pc grab into your computer go into users whatever your username is go down to app data if this is does not show up you just see the a cell on your clock it is a hidden file so you need to have view uh, and then you need to have hidden items as showing for that to, to come up if you, if you don't see it. Go into app data, roaming, and then now this is where the percent app data percent takes us. So we will now, if you went the long way or the shortcut, go into our dot Minecraft and we are going to scroll down to our mods. If you do not have a mods folder, a good way to uh, make one is to open the Minecraft launcher and open up the fabric installer that was made. So if I have this <laughs> loading bootstrap uh, and it's going to update our Minecraft launcher because we put a new thing on it, I'm assuming. And then it's loading up oh, and right here we have our fabric loader the 0.14.21 for 1.20.1 so if your mods folder is not working just hit play and then once you load up a world uh, you can just close out of it uh, completely and then you should have your mods folder when you come back into this going into our mods folder uh, you will have mods now if you have a if I have the 88 or what is it, 84 uh, because they're, if you have them for different versions, so this is 1.20.1, and this is 1.20, I do have Gecko Lib, that's for my entity support, and then for here I have 1.20, and then, you know, if you have something that is for different versions, most of them are incompatible, some of them are compatible, but, uh, 1.20 happens to be compatible with 1.20.1, because that is a hotfix, but we're not going to get into that. Basically, if I have 1. If I have 1.19 files in here and I shove a 1.20, you're gonna get some pretty interesting looking errors. Uh, so make sure that you only contain one Minecraft version. What I would recommend is making a folder like this, and then uh, it's called hold, so it's gonna hold all my files. And then inside that folder, I would want to make one, and I would say 1.20.0, or I could just say 1.20 flat. And then I can put everything in here. And then if I had a new, let's say I had other mods, I could say 1.19.3.4, or just 1.19 flat. And then I could put all of my jars in here. So you'll have a separated folder, but it can't all be in your mods folder because whatever is in your mods folder will be loaded. So if I have 1.20 and uh, and 1.19 stuff, they can't load together. So I need to basically make decisions. So let's basically make a new folder and I'll just be fancy, 1.20.1, just to separate that there's a difference. Uh, so let's take our Fabric API that we have downloaded, and we are just going to drag this in here, and we are going to need to make that uh, build file, uh, the jar, building a jar uh, that we made a while ago. So if we go into our Fabric tutorial, and we go into our build, and then in here you have libs, which I believe stands for libraries. And then here you should have two things. You should have your dot jar and then your sources dot jar. Your sources don't really mean anything. All you need is a jar file. Uh, if you want to keep it together, you can keep it together. But we can always drag this in here. If you want to copy, you can. But these are the two things in our mods folder. So our mods folder is now loaded. So now if I, now that I've put everything in my mods folder that is needed, I can whip up my Minecraft launcher, make sure that the one, that the loader that I'm using in here has to be the same exact version number as the ones in my mods folder. So I have 1.21 mods. So here I have 1.20.1 loader. I understand the risks, sure. Preparation can take a little bit because every time Minecraft makes an update, there's more files that it has to go through, and then it has to add your files on top of those extra files. But 
once it loads up, it loads up. All right, here we are. So I will hit single player and I still have all of my stuff because it will not affect whatever I have. But let's create a new world. Let's put it in creative and create new world. And I should have basically everything in my mod. Ah, here we are. Grand, glorious, lava pool, some cows. It's a grand world that we have here. Have I hit my E key and I go over to the second page? Well, first off, the fact that there is a page tells me that this is modded. I go over to my next page and look at that. We have my animated block and our regular block. So we do now know that our mod is now working entirely as we want it to. So I have now just made a jar file, which means I have the official version of the beginning. That was the first jar, jar file I made. If I plan on updating it, I would rec severely recommend that you're changing your mod version so that you understand that there is a difference. So what I like to do is I have my version two because this is my second tutorial series that I have. And now we have the dot zero. And then let's say that for my next, uh, jar, the next time I'll build a jar file, I want to make a 2.1. This little elephant will come up and what the elephant is going to change basically is that the next time I decide to make a build dot jar, let's make one just just for the fun of it, even though there's no difference. I will now know that this thing has been updated, the build has been successful, and then if I go into my fabric and I go into my build and my libs, it is no longer called that 2.0, it's now called 2.1. So this is so that you can identify when, like, which one is higher, which one was more recent, and stuff like that. Um, but that is generally in there. I can just kind of delete this because I don't actually need it. But from here, we can just keep updating it every time we want to make a jar file. So every time you make something in your mod and you update it, I would always recommend doing that, hitting the little elephant, and then uh, you can then build your jar after. So that is basically it for, I mean, we basically covered everything. There isn't really any code. This is mainly about you getting your mod out there once we really start getting into modding because now we have finished the very basic assets, but we're not done with assets yet. There are some things that we're going to be doing to some of the blocks that are going to require more um, complicated assets, but we can't do complicated assets with basic blocks. So now, uh, from this point, we are now going to be in the blocks section of the world. We might jump here and there back into assets a little bit, but, uh, and we're also going to start a tiny bit of data, but data is really going to be for the end. It's really for the loot table. Um, and even then that's going to be like six videos in for the, the block. But anyways, that is it. You now have built a jar file and you now know how to update it. So every time we update something, you, every time you learn something and you want to update your mod, show it to your friends, just see how it is in the real world. You can always play and test with it. I would only recommend doing this when it is an official version or, you know, dare I say official, or even if you're testing it with some friends so that they get the feel for something. But that's generally it. Well, that has been a little bit of a lot of information. So if you have any questions in the com you can <laughs> let me know in the comments below. But that is going to be it for me from me in this video. So thank you guys so much for watching. And without further ado,